Okay, I am ready now. Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, we have stuff and things to talk about, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to on Stuff and Things, and working. We will talk a little bit about saying goodbye to one of my YouTube channels. Kind of a sad day. It's kind of a sad week. We're going to get into that a little bit. And then we have some boxes, some big old boxes ugh, that I found in my P.O. box this morning. So this one's really heavy. I don't know what's going to be in these things, but I'm very curious to find out. So let's get into it. All right, gang. So what can you look forward to on Stuff and Things and working? You will notice I'm not saying Stuff and Things plays. We'll get into that. First of all, this coming week, there will be the very first, and maybe only, we'll see, actual sponsored video on my channel. Now, sometimes companies will send me products for review, so I guess that is technically a sponsored video when they provide the product for free. I always mention that in the review if it has been provided for free to me. But this time, Raycon. You guys have heard Raycon. If you've ever heard a podcast, people advertise these things all the time. They contacted me and asked me to do a review of their everyday earbuds, and they said they would pay me for the review. I said, what does that mean? They said, oh, you know, we'll just send you the product and we'll give you, it's basically, it's based on clicks per melee, how many people watch the review, there's this whole formula, whatever. I said, I will do this as long as I can say whatever I want about the product. They said, you can say whatever you want, except you can't mention competitors' products. I was a little iffy on that, but I figured, eh, I can get around it other ways, which I have, you'll see in the video. So, kind of a new realm for me. It's probably not something I'm going to do very often. A lot of companies ask me to review things and ask to pay me to review things, but they're usually kind of fly-by-night Chinese companies with weird products on Amazon, and they're like, oh, we'll pay you $50 to review this, like, desk mat. I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. Thanks anyway. But this one seemed interesting. I've always been curious about these. I wanted to check them out. So this review will be posting this Wednesday. I think I just broke the box. The Wednesday after that, we will have the first impressions video for a very intriguing blend, Sheraton Victorian Mixture. This was sent to us by our good friend Chris Coffey. He was able to procure this in Scotland, I believe. And this is a mixture that was supposed to be a replacement for Dunhill Elizabethan when it went off the market. Now we have Peterson Elizabethan, just the same as the old Dunhill version, but this was supposed to be very similar to Elizabethan, obviously. Victorian, Elizabethan, you get the idea. So this one is interesting. This will be coming up the week after next, or no, this will be next, the, the next video is this one, the one after that is this one. And then, since I had to do this video quickly, the Raycon video, we will do the one year update on the Casio G-Shock GW5000U. My favorite watch of all time right now. So lots of good stuff coming up on Stuff and Things. On working, we will have working episode 19. I recorded that right before Christmas, so it was the last thing we did before I had my long weekend for Christmas. And the whole point of that was to have a nice, smooth ramp down into a little bit of time off. I had like a four-day weekend for Christmas. And you should watch that video to see if that's actually what happened. And then on Stuff and Things Plays, the channel is still there, for any of you who are worried. The Tears of the Kingdom series finished last week, so you should check that out if you haven't already. And then there was a video that I posted after the last Tears of the Kingdom video in which I explained why there won't be any more regular updates on Stuff and Things plays for the time being. Get into that next. So, for those of you who follow Stuff and Things plays, you will have seen that I posted a video on Wednesday in which I explained that I was not going to be posting any more regular updates on Stuff and Things plays, at least for the foreseeable future. And I don't want to get back into all of that. I posted a whole video about it on Stuff and Things plays explaining my reasoning, but the short version is basically I have been doing that channel for almost 7 years and the views have gone down instead of up. 
So obviously I'm not doing something right or it's just not something that's ever gonna catch on. And when I'm spending around seven hours a week just on that channel and the views just keep going down and down, it just becomes very discouraging, demoralizing. You just don't feel like doing it anymore, especially when I'm always so pressed for time throughout the week. I, I do a lot every week and I don't want to complain or anything. That's not the point of this, but it's just having an extra seven hours a week would be huge for me. And that's why I decided after the Zelda series, I wanted to see how the Zelda series would do. And I really, really pushed that series. I went on forums. I went all over the place on Reddit, trying to get people to watch that. And it didn't work. I know there are a lot of really devoted people who watched all my videos. And to those people, I am very sorry. I explained all this in the video. And it just sucks because you really feel like you're letting people down. And even though it's obviously not financially viable, it's not viable as far as like time and effort that I was putting into it, I still wanted to keep doing it just because there are so many people who depended on those videos. Not dependent, it makes it sound more important than it is, but really looked forward to those videos. And so it, it's not, it doesn't feel good to have let those people down, but a lot of people, almost everyone, pretty much everyone, was very understanding. They left some amazing comments, and I didn't want to read all those out because this channel isn't about Stuff and Things Plays, but I did pick one from our good friend Hexeter Bonsai, and it was just, it was really touching, and so I thought I would read it. Hexeter says, I don't know what it is. I wish I did so I could express it properly. Seeing that goodbye screen affected me a lot more than even I thought it would. I've been a regular viewer of your channel since I fell in love with the Soulsborne games, and I remember randomly googling Let's Play Dark Souls, and I watched a bit of several, but none of them really spoke to me as something I thought I would enjoy watching long term. It was listening to you get interested in the lore of the game as much as I was that really drew me to your videos. After that, the rest is history. I found your other videos, realized you were my kind of person in more ways than one with many of your views on things. Subnautica is one of my absolute all-time favorite games ever, and when you announced you were going to do that one, I was literally telling friends and family that I was not to be disturbed while I watched you explore. Then you went on to other games that I dearly love, like Bloodborne, Soma, Inside, so many truly amazing games that defy the norms of AAA and yet absolutely stand strong with them in popularity. I was such a fan of Kevin's adventures that when you dipped your toes into Valheim and eventually ended that series, I went out into my own world of Valheim and made up a resting place of sorts for Kevin Kevinson as well. Kevin the Kurt has even been enshrined as a non-player character in my regular role-playing game group's adventures. No matter what game system my players are using, there is always a Kevin of some, descri of some description to interact with. Stuff and Things Plays has been such a big part of my YouTube experience that I honestly don't know what I will do without your videos. Of course, I went back to the channel and browsed through the playlists and spent half my time saying, oh my god, I have to rewatch this, so I will have that to soften the blow. I fully understand the need to put your time to where you are seeing the most return. So as much as I'm sad to see you pull the curtain on SATP for the time being, I am happy knowing that you will continue to play great games in your own time and without the pressure to narrate to an audience or consider where to edit things. I can only imagine how much free time you will be gaining back for other pursuits and I look forward to seeing where it takes you. I'm going nowhere and will likely be found wandering the archive hall somewhere between Bradcraft and Red Dead Redemption 2. Thank you for everything, Bradley, for the countless hours of fun and living vicariously through you, for your priceless sense of humor, for Kevin's complete inability to press a button correctly, even when it would save his life and kicking things at the worst times. You'll continue to be Bradley. We'll continue to be the audience. This has been Stuff and Things Plays. It will live on forever in your fans. P.S. If you're considering options, maybe a format like your pipe tea reviews, but for games you like. A quick video of what your initial impressions are, and then a follow-up when you're done with the game. Or something akin to your you gotta play this concept. Just little one-off style things. No need for a schedule, just when a game really grabs you. From our good friend Hexeter Bonsai. Ugh, that that's amazing. Thank you so much for that really, really amazing, I keep saying amazing, for that heartfelt and thoughtful comment. Um, and that's that's really the the difficulty I had in deciding to end the channel is people like this who have really loved those videos and who have followed those series throughout the years. So believe me, I'm aware of that and I don't take it lightly 
I really appreciate all the people who have watched. And uh, yeah, maybe in the future we'll come back with a series here and there. But for now, we're just going to let that lie. Those archives will be there forever. Hopefully, you guys can go back and watch the series that you love. But once again, thank you, Hexeter Bonsai, for that wonderful comment. All right, gang, but now it is time to open some mystery boxes here. Ugh, these are big. So this one is from... Uh, uh, Pedro... It's hard to make out. D something. Not sure exactly what it is, but it looks like it's from Texas. Let's crack into this thing and see what we've got. Okay, my Bark River... Uh, which one is this? Oh, my Ultralight Bushcraft. Let's see here. I don't know if this was supposed to be for Christmas. I think I checked my P.O. box right before Christmas, so hopefully I didn't ruin anything. Let's see. To my good friend, Bradley. Very nice. Let me get into this. This will double as a leather, leather, leather opener, a letter opener. Inside, there is a note. Okay, let me put the box slightly to the side here. I'm running out of room on my desk. Okay. Dear Bradley, I hope you're doing well and that you had a great Christmas. Okay, so I didn't miss Christmas here. My name is Pedro, and I've been living in Texas since 2018. Years ago, when I still lived in my homeland, Brazil, I started watching your channel to learn more about the hobby I inherited from my father, and until then had learned, uh, based on the knowledge organically panned by him? Passed? Oh, passed by him. You quickly became my most important influence in the pipe essing world, and thanks to your tips, I started enjoying better moments with my favorite teas. Unfortunately, the tea allergy I experienced at a younger age with uh, cigarettes developed into a more severe allergy that made me quit my pipes. Wow. I'm giving away all my pipe gear and tea tins, but I would like to share some with you as a way of saying thanks. Please dispose of them as you wish, essing or sharing with friends and viewers. Enjoy it. Merry belated Christmas and a happy new year. Your friend, Pedro, December 26, 2023. Wow, thank you so much, Pedro. That is amazing. I'm sorry to hear that you can't enjoy the hobby anymore, but I'm very curious to see what you have sent along. Bubble wrap. More bubble wrap. Paper towels. I'm sure there's more than just that in this. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, yes, there is a lot going on here. Let me just start taking some of these tins out. They're all individually wrapped. Lots of tins. This is crazy. Oh my god. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> this is insane. This might, this might take a while. We're gonna have to run through these. Pedro, thank you so much. This is ridiculous. Uh, let's just start going here. We have Cornell and Deal Small Batch. Bam. That is a cool blend. Thank you very much for that. Pedro. We have... Ah, Kramer's Father Dempsey. Very cool. I don't know what to say about this. This is just insane. Reading that comment from Hexeter, getting gifts like this, it's just ridiculous. Uh, we have Stratford. For a second, I thought it was going to be Fillmore. <laughs> I started having post-traumatic stress syndrome. Uh, here we have... Oh, Temple Bar. This is a blend I have enjoyed in the past by GLPs. Lots of nice GLPs blends here. Ooh, Quiet Nights. Very nice. Very good blend. Have I done a revisit on, on Quiet Nights? I can't remember. Maybe that's something in the, that'll be in the cards if I haven't done one. Oh, a big old tin of MacBaron Virginia Number no. 1 Ready Rubbed. Very cool. There's a lot more in here, gang, and it is insane. Okay, uh, we have Cornell and Deal Joy de Vie. Vive? Joy de Vive? <laughs> Blend I have never had. We have. Uh oh. 
Oh, no, it's another tin of Stratford. Once again, I thought it was going to be Fillmore. Uh, GLP Stratford. Very good blend. This is one of the blends that I was uh, auditioning as a replacement for Elizabethan, and I liked it a lot. We have... Ooh, I've always wanted to try this. This is Blue Ridge by Cornell and Deal. Never had that, but I've always been interested in that. Very cool. And then, look at that. Hearth and Home Black House. Amazing. And then, Pedro, you are a king among men, my friend. We have not one, not two, not three, not four, but five blends or tins of Dunhill Elizabethan. Ridiculous. <laughs> so crazy. Oh, and then there's still something else. Oh, look. Oh, wow. It's an old tin of Dunhill Ye Old Sign. Amazing. Or the old sign, as you would have pronounced that back in the day, as lots of people would, I'm sure, will correct me on that. I reviewed this a long time ago, but it hasn't been on the market. So, Pedro, that is so amazing. Thank you so much. I don't know what to say. And there's still more. We have another box. Ugh, this one is heavy. There's no return address on this, so I have no idea where it's from. Hopefully there will be a note. Oh, man. See, this is why I don't want to disappoint people. There are such amazing people watching my channels. And that's why it was so hard to end Stuff and Things Plays. <sighs> Let's see. Ugh. Cracking into this one. Oh, there's another piece of tape inside. Okay. Bradley. I'm really enjoying your pipe and tea content and the new working channel, too. I'm sending a little tea as a token of my appreciation. Mike in Ohio. Look at that. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. Okay, we have lots of packing peanuts. Oh, wow, okay. Let's see if I can do this here without getting things all over the place. Oh, my lord above. Look at this. Samuel Gawith, Commonwealth Mixture. Uh, damaged in shipment, still airtight. The tin is a little dented there. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. We have Peterson, Balkan Delight. Right there. We have Peterson, Nightcap. Amazing. He has uh, dates on the back of these too, which is nice. That one's November 22nd. Escudo Navy Deluxe. Look at this. Oh, this is cool. We have Capstan Blue and this Capstan as well. Very cool. We have a tin of, oh, Abingdon. GLPs. Very, very cool. Oh, Lord. Holy crap. A giant tin of GLPs Piccadilly. <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. This is insane. We have a huge tin of Cornell and Deal Sunset Harbor Flake. This is another one I have never had. Very cool. A giant tin of Black Point by GLPs. I can't even begin to describe the generosity of the two of you. This is insane. Oh my lord. A Gigantor tin of GLP's Westminster, a blend I enjoy quite a bit. Ugh. Insanity. Another giant tin of Westminster. Okay, gang, so a lot of you have asked, like, why don't you do giveaways? And I, I would love to do giveaways of stuff like this. But the fact that I am a public-facing YouTuber... It's not exactly wise to send people tea. Maybe there's a way to get around that, but as of now, it's, it's not something that I can easily do. But 
just bear in mind that I would love to share some of this with you because this is just crazy. I don't have room for this. This is just insane. Look at this. An old tin of Dunhill Flake. Amazing. A nice, <laughs> gigantic tin of Orlick Golden Sliced. Ridiculous. From, it looks like, January 2018. A tin of Peterson My Mixture 965. Oh, oh, Rattray's Red Rappery. This is one that people have asked me, or Rattray's, as people like to say, have asked me to review forever. I can't remember if I've done anything on this. I'm pretty sure I haven't done a full review, though. So that is very cool. This is from 2018 as well. We have a tin of, oh, Sunbear. Have I heard of this? I think I've heard of this. Cornell and Deal Small Batch Sunbear Mountain Flower. Very cool. Oh my lord, there's still way more in there. Uh, this is a tin of Cordell and Deal Small Batch 8 State Burley. Ridiculous. We have another Abingdon. GLPs. Oh look. Some Peterson Elizabethan. I'm never going to have to buy this again. And finally... Another of Abington. GLPs. You guys, this is just insane. Mike, Pedro, it's crazy that these both came at the same time. And now I have just so much freaking pipe tea sitting on this table in front of me. I wish I could, I guess I could maybe turn the camera around. But anyway, you'll probably see it in the thumbnail. This is just a ridiculous amount and I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. Flabbergasted. All right, gang, <laughs> we've been going long. Those box openings were just so insane. Um, we're going to have to try to run through our hashtag ask stuff and things. Thanks again to Mike and Pedro. That is just ridiculous. Thank you to Hexeter for that wonderful comment on the last stuff and things plays video. But now, it is time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you would have a, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday stuff and things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things. You can also write to me via Patreon. If you are a Patreon supporter, go right to the front of the line. You can hit that super thanks button, go right to the front of the line, or you can leave me a question, comment, or feedback on YouTube under my YouTube videos in the comment section. First, via YouTube. We have a question, comment, something from at Fleber. I need to move some of this. It's like I'm in a tobacconists right now. I'm surrounded. I can't even move. It's ridiculous. Okay. Make a little room here. Here we go. Uh, by Flebert3789. I would like to report that I was unsubscribed somehow. I did not see a video for a couple weeks. I was curious what happened to stuff and things. I was unsubscribed. I wonder if this has happened to others. It has. It happens to me with channels that I follow as well. It's just a good idea. If you haven't, if there's a channel that used to do regular uploads and you haven't noticed a new video in a while, just check it out. See if you're still subscribed. But thank you, Flabbert, Flebert, for letting me know. Next, we have some feedback from last week's Sunday Stuff and Things. This is from at Gus Kuhnd 3971. Thank you for the super thanks, Gus Kuhnd. But Gus says... I don't know if I like your real-world essing problems while I'm still living in my car, freezing my butt off. Gus, if you are living in your car and freezing your butt off, I think that maybe spending your money on a super thanks isn't the wisest thing to do. So I hope you get back on your feet and don't worry about sending super thanks in the future. Next, from at spinetingler-op6st, my baseline blend, I was talking about baseline blends, how I went for three weeks without having Elizabethan and how it kind of changed my perspective on other blends. Uh, they say, my baseline is artisan's blend and I always drink chocolate milk with a pipe. It protects the mouth and tongue and makes everything taste better. I would agree with that. I love chocolate milk. Next, from at John Smith, I didn't really like Kringle Flake either. I liked the 2021 one, but 22 and 23 have been underwhelming and I don't think I'll be buying them anymore. Oh, and that staple kind of blend for me is Gawith 1792. Wow. I have so many jars full and I will always keep it in stock. Here's another mixture from, uh, another mixture, another mes message from Hexeter Bonsai. 
Honestly, with regards to your videos in recent times, I have not noticed you make unusual notice noises. I was talking about me going. I have, however, noticed that your overall volume is substantially lower than standard, so much so that when I switch a video on uh, on another YouTube channel, the blowout is shocking, as I have to grab my remote to turn down the volume. I expect it on the working channel videos, as I know you can't very well be going around fully mic'd up like a television production, but your Sunday stuff and things in your SATP videos are still very low volume. I noticed you haven't yet mentioned what might be coming after Tears of the Kingdom, so Hexeter, you know all that now. Sorry about that. But yeah, as far as the volume, I... Oh, I just did it again. Ugh, I'm trying not to do it. Can I do this without making a tisking noise? I, uh... <laughs> I put all of my volume to negative six decibels, which is actually kind of on the high end for broadcast standard. So I equalize everything, I use a hard limiter, go to negative six decibels, especially for voice. So that's probably about as loud as I would ever want to do. I think other people on YouTube just don't even bother doing that. They don't try to do a hard limiter or anything like that, and so their volume might just go all over the place. What I notice is sometimes you'll have a video where someone's talking, I have to turn it up, and then music will kick in, and it blows everything out. So I try to keep everything at a reasonable level. Uh, next, we have at Mr. Luigi. Hi, Bradley. I've discovered your channel earlier this year, and I've been hooked on it for quite a while as a fellow hobby pipe esser. I'm from Sweden and EUT laws here have caused my experience of pipe essing to be very limited. For example, there are only three Peterson blends that I'm able to get a hold of in every tea shop around the country. That's crazy. Which is highly unfortunate, because there are a lot of blends from that line that I do very much enjoy, such as Irish Flake and even Elizabethan, and I can only purchase them from the USA. That's why the blend that I would consider my baseline everyday pipe tea is from a local blender tea shop called Broberg's, which is a straight burly. They've been around for over 100 years, so you can almost consider it a codger blend here in Sweden. It packs well, lights well, is very relaxing, and most importantly, very easy to get a hand of where I live. When I started trying blends that I could only get a hold of in the States, I fell into that sort of experience you had with Elizabethan, as you described. I got to try a lot of premium blends during the summer, where I, almost, where I went almost a full two months without having a bowl of Broberg's. Despite some of that, I've come to call my favorites. None were able to top my everyday burly, and I guess the reason really boils down to the simplicity and availability of that blend. Exactly. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Mr. Lugie. Um, next, we have some feedback on the paradoxical review. There is a super thanks from our good friend Scott M. Scott says, thanks for the review, Bradley. I got a few tins when you mentioned upcoming review. Sounds like a good cold weather blend. I'll be trying soon. Cheers. I'm speeding up a little bit because I think my camera is going to overheat soon because I've been shooting 4K video all day long. We have at Brent Richards 4699. I love this stuff. Very simple. At mushroom, at mushroom leg. Is that a euphemism or an innuendo? Great description of a bird blend that I've overlooked. Might be one of your best I've ever watched. I'm going to revisit this blend as soon as I get home from work. Random fact for you. Did you know that the last words Walt Disney said were, Kurt Russell? I hope that's true. I know that Kurt Russell was, you know, his computer wore tennis shoes. He was in a bunch of those old Disney movies. It would be hilarious if that was the last word, or if those were the last words that Walt Disney ever said. And then finally, from at Randy Ditton 3996 <clears throat> I'll have to try this blend, but whenever you start that stupid reading voice, I have to change the channel. It's kind of cringe. Now, gang, it is time for the very best part of the show, and thank you, everyone, for all the feedback. I'm a little scatterbrained here. I'm still perplexed by the amazing amount of pipe tea that I just got in the mail. I am still touched by the amazing missive from Hexeter on the last Stuff and Things Plays video. But now it is time for the best part of the show, and that is where we thank our Patreon supporters. Remember, if you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below, and it is much appreciated. Helps pay for the fancy camera that is filming this video, the lights that are shining upon me, blends for review, even though I don't know if I'm going to have to buy any of those anytime soon, but other products for review, and just all the other extra costs that go into making these videos for you every week. And every week, we like to shout out those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Glenn Dunnington, Jason Buckner, MD of the North, David Gaudreau, Ryan McFadden, Arcturus, Ashes of the Phoenix, and Jonathan Proctor. And of course, the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month. People like 
Bob McGee. And of course, we'll never forget our dearly departed friend and Hall of Fame member, Peter Straub. Gang, I'm a lucky man. I have amazing people who watch my YouTube content. It's a shame that Stuff and Things Plays didn't work out, but the fact that I was able to connect with so many amazing people on that channel, even on a channel that never really garnered very many viewers, just goes to show you how great you all are. Getting these amazing packages in the mail, it's just, it's amazing. Please know that I understand and appreciate how amazing you all are out there, and I will never take that for granted. Thank you so much for watching everything. Please stay tuned for all the stuff coming up on the channels. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. Happy New Year, and I'll see you later. Wow. <laughs>